Hi, I'm Bruce Weinberg, and I'm the founder of The History Factory. This place is an information refinery where we capture, preserve, and leverage history for the competitive advantage of our clients. We have historians, designers, archivists, researchers, and writers who all work together to make history a competitive, useful tool for our clients to meet the daily challenges of business. The real power of history is the, the ability to persuade, the power to persuade. And what we do in this area is this is where the designers work to be able to create uh, visual, useful end products uh, from the history that we preserve here. And as you can see, it's a very open space. People are working uh, uh, in different types of medium. We do everything from uh, digital asset management, uh, traditional exhibits, archives, websites. But the way the place is designed is to kind of get the interplay between the archivists and the historians. They'll work together at all times to try to provide, whenever they can, uh, the most direct connection they can between the history and the artifacts. So you'll see people working in all kinds of medium. You'll see them working in photographs, uh, digital videos, uh, digital photographs. They'll be working with uh, large artifacts. They'll be working with a variety of things. But the whole idea here is that to make sure that the, not only are the artifacts treated well, but that they get the maximum amount of, uh, of uh, visual exposure in any kind of project we're working on. On this side of the History Factory, what we're doing is uh, this is where the interpretation is. This is where the historians, the researchers, the writers are all working to extract and interpret the history for, for the client's particular messaging, and that's most important. The way we work here at the History Factory is everything's fluid, everything moves. Uh, we're, when you're curating an exhibit, you can take a table and you can move it around, you can spread things out, you can, depending on what the artifacts are, you can log them and put them on this area here. You've got a lot of documents, you can put them in the area here. But the idea, again, is to have the most resources at your fingertips at any time to be able to really get the, the most out of the projects that you're working on. A lot of times we, we uh, get called by ad agencies, uh, PR firms from all over the country to provide information, research support for their projects. We've got a guy on our staff named Alden Hathaway who is one of the most respected researchers in the country. People will call him up and they, they need a piece of film footage to illustrate something that could never be illustrated otherwise. He can find it. He works places like the Library of Congress, historical societies. He'll dig, he'll find film footage in places. Here's a. He'll find film footage in hidden libraries that people have never seen before. Uh, he finds old books and publications online. He, needless to say, spends a lot of time on eBay. The first step in the uh, archival process is to arrange the materials. And what the archivists do are take the materials, get them in some type of order, so that they can place a hierarchy on them, an intellectual process, so that they can understand where the materials are from and what they reflect. They then put them in the acid-free files, and then they go into the acid-free boxes so that they're conserved and preserved, and they're, they'll stay in good shape over a long period of time. The next part of the archival process, then, is to uh, arrange and describe the materials. So what's happening here, the archivists are working together to take the information and put it into a database so that we're able to access the information. The files are described uh, into a hierarchical structure, and then they're accessible to the clients via the Internet. Now, in here are the archives. These are where the materials are stored on shelves, they're identified by the client, they're identified by the box, they're identified by the file. This place is environmentally sound and extremely secured. I don't think the temperature wavers more than a, a point or two a year. Uh, it has a very highly sophisticated security system and it also has a very highly sophisticated fire detection system. It's to ensure that these materials are conserved, sound, safe for the long term. These are the files of an automobile manufacturer, and what you can find in their history are things like drawings of prototype cars that were never designed. This company brought in Disney designers to design futuristic cars. Those files were lost. They were never seen. They've now been discovered, and they serve as a way to innovate the people of this company today to dream, to think outside the box. They're a very, very important part of this company's culture. Within these files are the history of some of uh, the the most famous global brands and they're part of the history of an amazing global branded goods company. Within here you see a whole process of how brands first are invented, then you have to educate the consumer, and then you have to continually innovate to make it better. Within here it's not only the evolution of a brand but an entire category that that brand will spawn and that can be told by looking through the files of this company. 
These are the files of one of the largest commercial banks in the United States. They, they date all the way back to just after the American Revolution, and they span today to, to how this bank has grown to be one of the largest investment banks in the world. These tell the story of how the American economic system, this amazing miracle, has funded the growth of a tremendous enterprise that we call the USA. Inside the files of this major American insurance company are insurance policies of people like Mary Pickford, Teddy Roosevelt, Will Rogers, George Burns, Thomas Edison. Edison's an interesting case. He wasn't insured if he died by electrocution. Will Rogers, at a time when you couldn't get insured if you flew an airplane, well, this company insured him, and as fate would have it, he died in an airplane accident. But these are the lives of famous people and everyday people and how they interact with a company. Within these boxes of the history of corporate America, they're the history of America in general. They're, they're stories about people and products, of trials and tribulations, of insurance companies that made sure that people could travel safely, of banks that made sure that great enterprises were funded, of manufacturing companies that made sure that great products made our lives better. This is indeed the history of our culture, of our American way.